some of Rio's residents, life seems simple enough. Money and privilege see to that. Even bad weather doesn't interrupt their daily regime. But for Yvonne Bizeha Jumelo, it's far more complicated. She's taking me to one of Rio's biggest favelas, a journey she makes each day. Uh, we are going to um, Complexo da Maré, which is a huge complex of slums. It's 16 communities, 130,000 people living in this place, you know. And is it dangerous? It's dangerous because um, Maré is not still pacified. No, it's dangerous because you have in that place three drug commandos that fight uh, among each other and of course with the police, etc. So there are shootings and complications every day. Every day? Every day, yes. Yvonne is the founder and principal of Projeto Oera, a school for slum children. It's no ordinary school and in the tough community, even the word normal has taken on a different meaning. It sounds so scary. I mean, there's kids living in these communities. Yes, kids living in such communities, they are used to violence. It means that violence to them is what's normal. They cannot understand that you can live in another part of the town where those things did not happen. Rio is what Yvonne calls two cities. The ghettos and the normal city. And as we drive, I begin to see what she means. We started in a well-heeled part of town, but now that's quickly changed. And according to Yvonne, the ghetto life is deeply damaging for the children. It is very complicated for the kids because, you know, kids that live in the, under stress, they don't learn correctly. Doesn't mean that you cannot not correct them, but the short memory it is, is, is damaged. Soon, we're in the favela. It's crowded and dirty. <laughs> Yvonne's school is a colourful and welcoming place for over 400 children. But it seems we're not the only ones who've just arrived. 3,000 soldiers are in the favela to keep the peace during the World Cup. And this patrol is not happy to see us. I did about three or four laps up and down this street just before coming in and asking, and obviously it's quite an intimidating force. I mean, they're standing here with their, with their guns and there's children walking around. We have to go visit their new army chief and we need to explain to him what we're doing here. So we're just hoping for the best. We weren't able to film the meeting with their commander, but he hasn't stopped us filming in the school. So we're going now to the violin. Their class, okay, yeah. good. And why are the kids learning the violin? Uh, because I think violin is an instrument that is very helpful yeah. to improve cognition. They have to have a lot of concentration. They have to have skills with the hands that mm -hmm. many don't. And uh, it's difficult, yeah. you know, it's a challenge. They are going to perform at the end of the year with a very known French violinist who came to give a concert in Rio in a big theater and uh, he's going to open and they are going to play with him. Wow. The students have only been learning violin for eight months. And so how quickly it goes. Yeah, it's that must be exciting. No, it's amazing, it's amazing. I really, I could not imagine that to be so quickly yeah. that they could take a study violin. So. Yeah. The children are encouraged to stretch both physically and mentally. Yvonne says the traumatic environment of the favela has affected the kids' capacity to retain information. They cannot memorize. And early in the day, Yvonne isn't interested in traditional chalk and talk. She uses these exercises to warm the brain, as she describes it. Everything is learned orally. If they don't know that orally, they are going to write, they are not going to have the speed. What I want here is the brain speed. 
To counter a short attention span, she's divided each class into a series of moments of 10 or 15 minutes. So the concept started many years ago in the 70s when I was studying cognition problems in children in countries at war. It's all about verbal communication and memory building. So this is the unblocking of, of the child's mind that you yes. are so Yes, exactly. About. Success for Yvonne is measured in many ways. Her older students will have a chance of finding work where before they had almost none. And she's proud of what's been achieved with this little boy diagnosed with autism. That was impossible six months ago. So the, the psychologist called me, what, what do you did with him? I said, you know, love. And coming to school this morning is another one of Yvonne's success stories. Maria Isabel Santos de Silva's young boy also has a mental disability, something that other schools simply couldn't deal with. And what do you think of Yvonne, what, what she's doing? Ah, olha, sinceramente, eu acho um anjo de Deus ela. Porque abaixo de Deus aqui foi ela que fez tudo pelo meu filho. Ele hoje aprendeu a ler, escrever. Back in the school, it's a hive of activity. There's more stretching, singing, and something that's uniquely Brazilian. So the kids are about to start a capoeira class, which is a Brazilian martial art with African influence, and they take on a sort of dance form, so we're going to take a look. The moves are complex and the kids are right into it. It's hard to know what they do without this school. Downstairs, there's also plenty of enthusiasm. Alejandra, is that good? Mmm, yum. Just like the rest of the kids here, she's digging into her delicious lunch of rice, beans, meat and vegetables. The children can concentrate better on a full stomach. Working in the kitchen is Gigi. Two generations of her children have been educated by Yvonne. After she finishes her shift, she's kindly invited me to her home. Now, Gigi lives just nearby to Yvonne's school. Um, she's just up here, so we're going to have a look inside. It's a small, very neat place full of children. They're polite and the young ones are hard at work. For 30 years, Gigi lived on the streets until she was rescued by Yvonne. Brazil, pobre no, no consegue nada, né? Since then, she's called this favela home. She's been fortunate to spend two decades working with Yvonne after starting her education with her. Ela arrumava cursos para os filhos, para o meu filho, arrumou cursos, trabalhos no hotéis. E ela ajudou bastante na prefeitura para que a gente ganhasse essa casa. Chichi's grandchildren have a stable home environment, but they're still exposed to favela violence. I was shocked as Wanderson told me about the murder of his four-year-old friend, a senseless killing that occurred when the little boy became excited over chocolate. O garotinho tinha ganhado a dúvida da parte quando ele estava muito alegre. Aí o, coisa, o primo dele estava jogando, aí ficou com raiva, pegou, matou o garotinho, botou dentro, primeiro botou dentro da, da, do guarda-roupa. Aí a irmã dele ficou procurando, procurando, todo mundo procurando. Aí depois ele mudou, botou o garoto dentro da máquina de cabeça para baixo. Aí a irmã dele foi ver, foi, foi olhar na máquina, tava, o garoto estava lá. Back at school, Yvonne is dealing with the fallout from yet more violence. Many students haven't made it to school today, and now she's finding out why. 
Depois você me mantém informado, tá bom? O que, que aconteceu realmente, tá? Ok. Obrigada. Tchau. So what was that about? This was because there is a shooting 200 meters from here. Now I do training twice a year. It's a lot of shootings or even grenades. So the best set is to go to the floor. Yvonne's been working with Rio Street Kids since the 1980s and is no stranger to violence. In 1993, she was first on the scene following an infamous mass killing known as the Candelaria Massacre. So one day came a police car at night and killed eight. They were supposed to kill one, but you know, the kids start to run and, and shouting, etc. So they kill eight kids. And I, I was the first to be there. Por que, que você não mora com a sua mãe? Porque eu, eu não eu vou lá e mandei eu vir embora de novo. The massacre shocked Brazil and the world, and Yvonne knew she had to get the kids off the streets. So after one month, um, I decided to go under the viaduct and build the first classroom. Two decades after the viaduct classroom, her privately funded favela school is internationally acclaimed. And Yvonne continues her relentless campaign for children's rights. She says a staggering 6,000 children meet a violent death in Brazil each year. In 2012, her anger was funneled into this impassioned YouTube plea. So I want you to know that Brazil does not respect the rights of children and that we have to stop that this quite genocide because those children murdered by or the military police or by stray bullets in the slums or by fights among drug gangs in the slums or in the city are colored or black we cannot accept anymore in a country that says is developing. So I ask you to have pressure on Brazilian government, to have public policies to help those children to be someone in life and to stop the killing. The, the marketing and the propaganda that Brazil is such a paradise on earth makes me, uh, you know, makes me sick. So, okay, we, we have improvements, we have a lot of things happen that are good, but we cannot hide the, the, the worst side of the country. You have to be an activist because this has to improve, point. Huh? Cannot go on killing people like that. In 2014, in a democratic country, you are not at war. Her support for the favela children comes at a price. She recently intervened to help a boy who'd been beaten, had his ears sliced off and was pinned to a lamppost with a bike lock. He had to be cut free. These photos produced a reaction that shocked her. That was hell. So I started to get the threats, telephone calls, emails, and all kinds of things. Many times I went uh, in the streets and people did that on me, spot on me, and say that I should be in his place because I'm um, educating Bennett in the favelas. So I have to have uh, police protection for some days and I decided to leave the country for 10 days. So since they leave me alone. So it's scary. I was scared. Yvonne says that crime is now spilling out of the favelas and into suburban neighborhoods. People are becoming fed up. So it's a, it's a mess. The violence when is in a, ra in, a, in a rate that is in Brazil, it's a mess for the society. <laughs> Despite the increasing backlash, she's not prepared to stop her work. What motivates you to campaign for these children? What's it like when you see a child? Because I don't like injustice. I don't like cruelty. Whether it's street kids or her school kids, Yvonne and her dedicated staff are determined to make a difference. Do you feel loved by your kids? Oh yes, sure. Of course I know. I feel loved, yes. If you give love, you receive love.